live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods moving in storage studio. It's the Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm Ramsey personality George Campbell, joined this hour by my colleague Christina Ellis, best-selling author of Confessions of a Scholarship Winner, and we are excited to be taking your calls about money, life, student loans, forgiveness. Is it happening? Is it not happening? Nobody knows, Christina. <laughs> it's been absolute chaos, and uh, let me say, I am hot off the flight from San Antonio, where we ended our live events season for the entire year with our Building Wealth event. Many thousands uh, showed up, and I love connecting with people. It gave me so much hope for uh, for this generation, for the economy, for the world. It's amazing what happens when you stop reading the headlines and you get around real people who are wanting to improve their lives, regardless of what's happening in the White House. Yes, the energy is just electric. People are craving not only that information and inspiration, but to be around other people who are motivated and excited and you know changing their own lives. Yes, and so it's encouraging, because the whole point of this event, yes, we talk about how to build wealth, despite of whatever's going on in the economy, but at the heart of it is this idea that we have control over our financial destiny. We can't control a lot of things in life, but we can control our habits, our behaviors. We can set goals. We can aim for those. And that is what causes people to succeed. Yes. And so what's happening with, uh, I've just saw headlines floating around while we were traveling around the country, but you've been keeping up with the latest and greatest on the student loan forgiveness debacle. Tell us what's happening currently. Well, it's pretty much feeling like the exact opposite of control. Right. So many people are counting on this forgiveness right now. So many people have been promised forgiveness, have been anticipating it. But so far, it's not looking so good. So this past week, another court blocked the student loan forgiveness plan. So Biden student loan forgiveness is definitely in limbo right now. Um, that's the second court to block this. So people, you know, expecting ten to twenty thousand dollars in student loan forgiveness don't exactly know what's going to happen. And there's just a lot of questions, a lot of anxiety in the air because as of right now, that pause is set to end on December 31st. So January 1st, payments are due unless they bump that back again. It's due January 1st. So I just think it's such an important conversation to have right now and a wake up call for a lot of people that, you know, this may not happen, which is kind of a scary thought because a lot of people are counting on this right now. A lot of people, you know, they're they're not even thinking about making a student loan payment right now. They're not thinking about that. So if you're in that position right now and you're really counting on that forgiveness, I would encourage you to take a moment and think through, you know, if this doesn't happen, how am I going to pay these loans off? Like, take this moment and think, how can I be in control of my finances? I don't want to just sit here waiting and feeling all this anxiety to see what the, you know, Biden administration is going to do, what Washington's going to do. Like, take control of your own finances, get on a budget and start thinking through what will my financial picture look like if this forgiveness doesn't happen? Mm. Yeah, well, 26 million people right now are in that limbo um, as the courts decide all of this. And uh, the email came through at 3 a.m. after <laughs> voting closed. And it was like, hey, oh. we're shutting down applications for student loan forgiveness as we uh, s- deal with this. And so it just goes back to what we've always said. Regardless of who's in office, never yeah. rely on a politician or a policy to change your life. Right. Control the controllables. You can't control whether or not they're going to do this forgiveness. Like that is completely out of your hands right now. Mm. So the way to reduce that anxiety, the way to reduce that concern is to start thinking through a plan for yourself and what's going to work for your family. Beautifully said. Well, let's get to the phones this hour. It's a free call at 888-825-5225. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. Nathaniel kicks us off in Jacksonville, Florida. Nathaniel, welcome to the show. Hi, it's great to be here. How are you guys doing? We are doing great. How can we help today? All right. So I'm 17, and I'm I'm sitting on $19,000 in the bank. Uh, I have two jobs, and I make about $12 an hour. I'm wondering, where should my money be going? Gosh, Nathaniel, I just want to high-five you so badly right now. You're incredible. How would you get the 19 k Just working your tail off? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the moment I could get to working, I, I started. And you've been working for what two, two, three years now? Yeah. Wow, that's Sounds incredible. About right. And so, are you are you living with family? Yep. Okay. What are your future plans? Are you looking to go to college? Go into the workforce? Uh, yes, actually, uh, I got a college all picked out, and it's only going to be ten k for the full four years. Whoa, that's great. How did you do that? Um, there are you have the smaller state colleges that we have here in Florida. I just picked one that uh, it's 
good and was what I wanted to do. So, so what are you doing right now? What's your What are your two jobs? Um, one is working as an associate for Panera, and the other is working for McDonald's. Nice. And and what do you want to do in the future? What are you going to study? Uh, I'm going to be studying computer uh, some development for programs and all that. Cool. So you want to be a software engineer, developer? Um, mainly a developer, actually. Awesome. That's a great field to go into. And uh, as you're finding out, you can do that and not spend a hundred grand on a on a degree. So I love yeah. that you have a ten thousand dollar you know college p- picked out. That's amazing. Is that ten thousand dollars including you know housing and meals? Or what, what's your plan for paying for, you know, everything outside of the cost of tuition? Yeah, so I still plan to work while I'm going to college as well. But um, it's not that far away from where I'm living right now. It's like an hour and a half away, a one-way drive. But I could potentially make a move to be a bit closer if I need to. And get an apartment with some roommates? Uh, actually living with family again. But oh. I'd, be like, I'd be like 30 minutes closer. That's cool. Okay. Well, what to do with this money? You have $19,000. I would not recommend you invest this money because right now we need to invest in Nathaniel. And the next few years have a lot of question marks and unknowns. And so I want to make sure that we get you through college completely debt-free with a pile of money in the bank. And so the best thing to do with this money is to put it in a high-yield savings account and and use it to get through the next few years as you graduate debt-free. And Nathaniel, I'm going to challenge you too, is to look into scholarships. You sound like a very on top of it young man, like you've really got a lot going for you. And if you can also just save this money, I love that you're keeping it in a high yield savings account, that you're going to have that money at the end. But if you can also get somebody else to help pay for your education and award you for your accomplishments, I mean, that's just going to be a bonus, like icing on top of the cake. Oh, absolutely. And part of this is going to be your emergency fund. You're driving a car right now, right? Yep. Is it pretty reliable? Um. I have actually like two different vehicles that I swap through. Um, the car that I usually use is uh, pretty reliable, but then I have another one that's eh, iffy. Oof! And you're paying for the insurance and everything on both of them? Uh, not on both. So this is where it gets interesting. One of them, yeah, one of them is my mom's car that she uses when she's not. Um, driving down and back from Daytona. Oh, okay. Um, so you're only paying I, for one of these yeah, cars. Yeah. All right. That makes me feel better. Well, Nathaniel, you're a bright young man. You've got more maturity than I had at 17. I'll tell you that much. And so it gives me a lot of hope for you. Uh, get through college debt-free. Keep this money safe and sound. Don't go crazy investing it. you got plenty of time to do that once you graduate debt-free with an incredible job. So proud of you, man. More of your calls coming up. 888 825 This is The Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. show. I'm George Campbell. Joined this hour by Christina Ellis, and we're taking your calls at 888-825-5225. 
I appreciate all of you listening into this show. I heard from many at our live events. They listen every single day relentlessly to stay motivated and inspired on their journey. So if you like the show, here's a reminder. Please consider subscribing, leaving a review, and sharing it with a friend. And uh, another reminder, if you want to visit us, we are just south of Nashville, Tennessee, and it's always a good time in the lobby. Right now, there's a lemur named Draco, who I just got to meet (laughs) in the lobby. Uh, I think the guys are getting a shot there if you're watching online. And uh, you just never know what you're going to stumble into. And so we love to meet guests who travel from all over the country, and we love to meet lemurs named Draco as well. (laughs) Uh, It licked my ear, Christina. It made me very uncomfortable. (laughs) It was was fun watching you squirm. (laughs) Good times. So uh, we're going to go to the phone lines now. Sean joins us across the pond in London. Sean, welcome to the show. Thank you. What's going on? Well, I, I am 31 years old. And my wife and I, fortunately, uh, with our, we've been fortunate to stay debt-free um, through our doctorate degrees, and we're, it's time to buy a house. And I have never taken out any debt for anything in, ever in my life, and I'm really hesitant to take this big step, um, and especially with rising interest rates. Sure. So you got your doctorates debt-free? Yes, sir. That's amazing. Was it through scholarships? Did you save? How'd you do it? It's through the U.S. military. Oh, uh, so that's I, awesome. I guess I should say I, I, I have time commitment, but not money debt. Yes. Well, thank you for your service, especially as we celebrated our Veterans Day the other day there. Yeah. What do you all thank plan you. on doing with your degrees? So uh, my wife is a, a stay-at-home mom. She's, a, she's awesome. Um, and I'm a, a physician for the military. Cool. So how long are you going to be in London for? Um, Just a a short time, actually looking to buy a house in in the U.S. What's the timeline for that? Uh, So looking to buy in the spring at some point, and uh, we'll be in one place hopefully for at least four years or longer. Okay. And so are you moving in the spring or are you moving sooner than that? Uh, Moving in the spring. Okay. Would there be harm in, let's say, getting a, a shorter term lease for six months, 12 months, while you guys come back and figure out where you want to live, what neighborhoods? What, what's the uh, rush and no, going, we got to uh, buy before we even get back? Yeah. Uh, actually, we, I mean, I plan on being back by the time we are buying. So, but to answer your question, there's, there's no rush per se. And is this city that you're moving to, is this a new city? Are you moving near family or kind of what does the situation look like with your new placement? Yeah. So it is a new city and, and actually being in the military, I'm not sure where it's going to be. Um, it's one of three, hopefully three places, (laughs) but, uh, the concept of buying a house in this, in this inflationary environment and the, the current housing uh, boom or bust, I'm not sure, and rising interest rates kind of makes me squirm a little bit. Mm. Well, there's also just, you know, the fact that you don't have to rush. Like, it, it's not that, you know, you shouldn't buy a house or you should buy a house, but there's also just a lot of external factors, like the fact that this is a new city, the fact that you're going to move probably in four years, um, the fact that you don't know the different neighborhoods, that you've been in another country for a while. So I would also just majorly weigh the personal factors in your decision because, you know, we can walk you through the financial part, but I think there's probably a lot of emotions to that decision. Definitely. I I think so. Does it feel like, hey, we're successful. We worked hard. We're in our early thirties now. We should be homeowners. Is that kind of part of it that's driving this? Uh, I mean, kind of, but at the same time, I I think part of it is, um, you know, when I started looking at rent at, well, let me back up. I look at a, a house payment and I, I look at the proportion of money in a mortgage that goes to interest and that, that kind of turns my stu- my stomach sour. But oh, then I think yeah. of the rent I'm I think of the rent I'm paying and, and one way and I know this may be erroneous, but one way to look at it is to say my rent is a hundred percent interest and uh, you know, I I, I don't want to continue paying hundred percent interest. Uh, with no equity and, and no no forward momentum. Yeah. Well, you know, it's when you look at it as just a math equation on paper, it doesn't make sense. But when you look at it as, oh, I'm buying myself time. 
I'm being patient. I'm transferring risk to the landlord, to the owner, that I'm not having to deal with the headaches of home ownership. And there's all kinds of costs associated with that. And so I, th- I think you're ready when the numbers make sense. And that means we're not going to be as concerned about interest rates because we can always refinance later down the line if it goes back down. And when it comes to paying the interest, that house is going to appreciate over time. You are buying an asset that goes up in value over time. And so, yes, I hate paying interest, and it makes me want to pay it off faster. And that's exactly what we did. And I think that's exactly what you're going to do too, Sean. So as long as you stick to a 15-year fixed rate mortgage where the payment's no more than a quarter of your take-home pay, that will dictate how much house you have. And instead of it feeling like this giant, scary step, you go, oh, this isn't that much of our world. We can handle this and more. We still have margin to live our lives, to be generous, to pay off our house early. And so that's the goal of, of living with those within those parameters. Yeah, and, and you know, like George said, do the math, but also factor in the closing costs with real estate too. If you're gonna be there four years as you're doing that math, remember that there are closing costs when you sell a house. So one, factor that in, you know, as you're doing the equation of how much equity you're really gonna get over time and what it's gonna cost you. And then just also, you know, take your time. Maybe you do take that six months and kind of feel out the neighborhood because while it's, you know, great to be in the market, it's a great way to build wealth. We're seeing a lot of articles now with a lot of people having buyer's remorse where they rushed into buying a house during the pandemic. They got caught up in this, you know, white hot market and this floor green, they felt like the next step in life is I have to be a homeowner. And so they, you know, (laughs) got in line with 60 other people and they were getting so competitive and aggressive that they just bought these houses that they didn't love because they felt like it was the next right thing to do. So yes, I would definitely weigh both and really feel through both. Do the math, put it all on paper, you know, make sure the numbers make sense. And then also just, you know, emotionally make sure it makes sense with your family and also make sure it makes sense with the actual house you find, that it's something you're going to be excited about versus it just being a check mark on the road to success. Absolutely. Sean, what's your income? Uh, it, is about, it is about uh, 120 per year. Awesome. And then do you have money saved currently for the down payment or is that next? We do. We have, uh, it's not a lot, it's uh, 30000 um, saved for a down payment. And we, we've we been good at maximizing our IRAs and our um, our 401k every year uh, up, up till now. Awesome. Well, you know, you're in that kind of uh, baby step four land. And some people, we call it baby step 3B. Some people will go, hey, I'm going to in- invest up to the match to be more aggressive with the down payment. Uh, With your income, you guys are going to be multi-millionaires at your age, being completely debt-free. And so regardless of how you do it, if the house is more urgent, you could put more towards that down payment right now to save up, you know, 100 100 grand by the time you guys move. And now we have a serious down payment, which lowers our monthly payment. And so uh, I want you to feel peace about this. And that's why I recommended, hey, get back to the States, rent for a while, really do your research, work with one of our endorsed local provider, Ramsey Trusted Real Estate Agents. Uh, you can connect with one at RamseySolutions.com. While you're there, use the mortgage calculator that we have. It's a free tool to help you figure out how much of this of my, of this in my world is this going to be. And that gives you peace as well. When you go, all right, the mortgage is going to be two grand with our down payment and we make eight or 10. Well, that's very reasonable. Right. And that, it, that becomes from moving from a big step into a small little walk. <laughs> and you go, wow, this house is a blessing instead of a curse because we didn't rush into it. So we are cheering you on uh, on the journey, man. Call us back when you got the house and when you when you pay it off. That'll be fun. Yeah. You can do a debt free scream once you're back stateside. <laughs> I love that, Christine. I was just talking to one of our uh, real estate ELPs, endorsed local providers, at our event in San Antonio, and I said, hey, how's the how's it been in real estate? Because I know the interest rates are crazy which is causing less people to buy. And he said, well, George, actually, it's been great because a lot of people regret the house they bought. And so now they're looking to sell and get to the actual house they want because they rushed into it. And so a great life lesson there. There you have it. Don't rush into it. Do it with peace. Do it over time. And it's okay if it doesn't happen tomorrow, uh, regardless of the pressure from your (laughs) in-laws. Okay. More of The Ramsey Show coming up. 888-825-5225 is the number to call. We'll be right back. I say it all the time. If you're a business owner and you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. And when markets are shifting, it's even more important. 
You've got to know where you stand so you make your next move the right move. And you don't have to be in the dark here. Over 31,000 businesses, including my team at Ramsey, know their numbers because they use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control of your financials, planning, budgeting, and inventory so you can manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Having everything in one place has saved my team hours each week since we made the switch to NetSuite. NetSuite is a game changer. So head on over to netsuite.com slash Ramsey to get a product tour today. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Well, folks, Thanksgiving is just a week away, and how nice would it be to have some extra wiggle room in your Black Friday budget? Well, good news. The Ramsey Christmas Cash Giveaway could help take the stress out of the holiday season. Right now, you can go to RamseySolutions.com slash giveaway to enter for your chance to win one of our weekly $500 prizes or the big kahuna, the $5,000 grand prize. And what's really cool is you can enter every single day to increase your chances to win. No purchase necessary, but sorry, kids, you got to be 18 or older to win. So tell mom and dad to go enter at RamseySolutions.com slash giveaway. While you're there, check out... A major sale happening right now where you can find Christmas gifts for everyone on your list. Some of my favorites right now are the 2023 Ramsey Gold Planner that Rachel Cruz, Dr. John Deloney, and myself work together on to make great, or Rachel Cruz's new wallet in red. For the amazing women in your life, I'm going to get one for my mom. I decided, Christina. Oh, that's so Mom, sweet. I hope you're not listening because <laughs> I just ruined the Christmas gift. Gosh, I'm not great at this. And for the men, we've got some awesome new Ramsey apparel, T-shirts, crewnecks, hoodies with some of your favorite Ramsey sayings on them. Uh, I'm hoping for a better than I deserve sweatshirt myself. We'll see if my wife is listening and she gifts that to me. So for all of your family, friends, coworkers, we've also got questions for humans conversation cards that are a must. They're hilarious. They'll spark some great convos. And select decks are on sale right now for only 10 bucks. And if you've used any of our best-selling books and tools, you're fired up to share what they've done in your life, now is a great time to pay that forward, to be generous, to uh, give it to someone else to start their journey. So trust me, there's something for everyone on your list. You can get it all done in one place at RamseySolutions.com. You don't have to doom scroll Pinterest and Amazon <laughs> and Etsy hoping to find a great gift. There you go. And who doesn't love a good giveaway? That's always so exciting. Um, you know, you just want to enter. Now, this is different than Powerball, you know, because number <laughs> right. one, it costs me nothing. And there's a much higher chance of me winning. Yeah. That's how I feel about our giveaway. <laughs> now, you won't win $2 billion, but... Hey, any giveaway is exciting. I once won a giant Yoda doll after entering at a Blockbuster give a blockbuster video wow. giveaway every single day and i finally won it what and happened I, to the yoda i sold it on ebay for 400 bucks oh my goodness <laughs> that is next level i'm very impressed with you christina thanks george Golly. way to hack the system all right i showed blockbuster <laughs> you showed them now they're bankrupt thanks to you it's your fault me and my yoda doll <laughs> All right, open phones this hour at 888-825-5225. Greg joins us in Arlington, Texas. Greg, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, my wife is retiring due to health matters December the 15th, and she's got in her 401k, she's got $50,000. Uh, our house is paid for. But everybody has a different opinion because we may have to turn to that $50,000 for an emergency or we would want to draw the interest that it would make, which I understand is not a lot of money to a lot of people, but it'd be a ton to us. Uh, uh, once a year, draw that interest out. And some people are saying, oh, I'll just put it in a CD. And some are saying an IRA and an IRA Roth. And God, it is so confusing mm. that, I, that I don't know what to do. Well, you've got a lot of and voices I, coming at you at once, don't you, Greg? Well, you, you read, you know, you can read on uh, one page on the Internet 
you know, don't eat eggs, and on the next page it'll say eat eggs the are the heck best thing ever. Eggs. Yeah, that's so <laughs> true. So true. And, that, and that's what I run into when I read or try to obtain knowledge. Mm. So you know, I was sitting here watching YouTube, and there was the Dave Ramsey, and I thought, why, why can't it hurt? All he can do is give me some decent advice. And so I thought I'd call in because the fifty is it, it's important to us. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Like I said, we put all our money into the house, and it's paid for uh, and and so i don't know i love it do you have any I'm other asking, debt i have you know about like three thousand dollars on a credit card on credit cards that i could pay off easy enough so you, Other than that, I you got both still have income yeah well well i have my social security uh, and uh, she'll get her Social Security. So the, our standard of living or the amount of money that we get per month will drop greatly. What will that so, be uh, once she retires? What will your monthly income be? Oh, we're going to be around $25,000 a year. Wow. And, Greg, are you still yeah. working or are you fully retired? Uh, no, I... I you know, I, I do a lot of jobs here and there, but I was a salesman, and salesmen are not the greatest people in the world for doing odd <laughs> jobs. And so it, that's kind of been hard, but where I can find things to do, I do them. Uh, I've got some money in the stock market, and I try to stay on top of it. But it's not much, you know. It's it's like five thousand dollars. Is it in single uh, stocks? Where are you investing currently? I, it's in single stocks, just mm. just things that I look at and I think, well, you know, eventually cheap stocks. So they're they're. I think the most expensive one share stock that I would have would probably be uh, seven eight dollars. Yeah, per share, you know. And you got a car and, payment as well. Yeah, I have a car payment that's three ninety eight. What's left on the loan? On a, Beg your pardon. What's left on the well, whole? How much do I loan? still left? On? I'm about sixteen. Okay. Well, I so think what's going to a lot of the interest. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I'm just looking at the numbers here, going, man. If you guys could get rid of this debt, it would give you a nice cushion of margin to have if you're going to be living off of Social Security. And so I'd want you, you need to get rid of the cheap. Get I I if you could I'd pay that stuff off ASAP. Uh, I don't know if it's worth selling at this point because you need to go out and buy another vehicle. Uh, but on the financial side, when you're looking at your investments, I want you to get out of the single stock game. That's going to be a volatile game. It's not worth your time. It's not worth your money. And as far as that 401k, uh, I don't want you touching it unless you have to. And I don't want you using it as an emergency fund because that's what your emergency fund is for. So do you guys have money outside of retirement, just in the bank? No, we put, we put everything into the house which now I'm finding out is not such a great idea for us. I don't know. I mean, what 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 does a paid-for house do for us financially? Well, it gets rid of your largest fixed expense, which is your mortgage payment, so that's a great sign. True, but true, true, I would not have yeah. told you to drain your, your bank account for it. We want you to have an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses with no debt and then pay off the house. And so you did some good things in this picture, but if I'm in your shoes, I'm going to stop listening to the internet and random voices, and I'm going to connect with a Ramsey SmartVestor Pro. These are financial investing pros that we vet that do things the Ramsey way, that want to help you, want to teach you. And so go connect with one of those. Go to the website, RamseySolutions.com, click on Ramsey Recommends, and you can get connected with one in your area. And then tune out the other voices. You know, tune out all the different people's opinions. Be careful who you listen to. Like, get somebody who's a real pro, and we appreciate you calling in today and trusting us to give you advice. Um, but, you know, sit down with a smart vester, you know, and they'll really be able to guide you through all the different aspects of your finances. They can kind of talk you through, you know, developing that emergency fund and your 401k and how to make sure you can afford everything moving yeah, forward. Yeah, I don't want you to but just scrape on the car along. I'm just had conversation. If you if you go buy another car, you're immediately starting that interest again. Well, we're not going to tell you to buy I, I, one. I paid the with majority of the interest on this particular one. I mean, that's how like, all car payments are set up. I was a <laughs> I used to run a car dealership. Well, we we believe that you can live without a car payment, and that means buying a used car with cash, no interest, no payments. 
And so if you're not okay, doing a lot of driving. I would alleviate $400. Uh, what my real question is, is what should I do with the 401k? I know leave it where it is, well, but once don't you're... I want to leave it somewhere where it's going to make the maximum amount of money? Sure. Because where it's sitting now, it's making like two and a half percent. Well, you can, can do better than that in a high yield savings account, Greg. So here's what I'm going to tell you to do. I, my recommendation would be once she retires, do a direct rollover to an IRA. And that SmartVestor Pro that you connect with can help you through that process. That's going to be the safest bet with no tax burden, and that will allow it to continue to grow with some good mutual funds. So wishing you guys the best in retirement and uh, getting through all this mess. I believe you don't have to scrape by in retirement. That You guys can enjoy it if we start doing the right things right now. Thanks for the call, Greg. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by Christina Ellis this hour. The number to call is 888-825-5225. You jump in, we'll talk about your life and your money. Up next, we head to St. Louis. Lindsay is on the line there. Welcome to the show, Lindsay. Hi there. I'm excited to talk to you guys. We are excited to talk to you. How can we help today? Awesome. Well, at the beginning of the year, I'm looking to make a career change. And I I actually read Christina's book, and I'm looking to work my way through hair school. Um, So I don't qualify for fast, but because of how much money I make and how much money I have, but I'd like to get as many scholarships as possible um, so I don't have to pay it out of pocket. And so I just wanted to see if you guys had any advice for getting scholarships for a trade school versus like a normal four-year degree. And if it's like the same I couldn't. I didn't find as many scholarships, so I don't know if it's, I'm just not looking in the right places or if it's um, just a little different. Well, I love that you're motivated to go debt free. That just makes me so excited, and that you've done yeah. the research, you've done the homework. I'm just like, get it, girl. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so starting with scholarships. I mean, there are some scholarships that are specifically for trade school, but a lot of times, just the regular scholarships that you find also qualify for trade school. So I'd encourage you to not just limit yourself to trade school scholarships, but look for a broad range of scholarships. And in that, you know, check the guidelines. So that's a thing that a lot of people don't do until they've applied for a scholarship and they've spent all the time doing it. And then they realize perhaps they didn't qualify or there was some certain little guideline they didn't check. So, you know, there are millions of scholarships out there and you can't apply for all of them. So take the time on the front end to, you know, read the the little fine print and make sure, you know, that it qualifies for a trade school that, you know, it's not just limited to four years Um, because a lot of them, you know, are open to either. And if you can't find that info, just give them a call or email. I think a lot of people feel like scholarship programs are these like far out there things and that there's not like real people behind them. Um, but a lot of times it's, you know, foundations, it's people who are really passionate about education and giving away money. So, I mean, just picking up the phone and yeah. asking for clarification is totally OK. OK, awesome. Can yeah. I ask a follow up question? Yeah, of course. Okay, so this is kind of like an entrepreneurial route, like um, going to hair school, and I'm wanting to, you know, replace my income next year even while in hair school. And so, but also my husband is looking to leave his job. So I'm wondering, like, we're following, we're trying to follow the baby steps, but we have a little bit more in our emergency fund than normal. And so, um, and we just got married. So I'm trying to figure out, like, how much should we set aside being that we both are looking to leave our jobs in in the near future. So is he going back to school or is he just trying to find a different job? No, he does video and photography full time um, at a company and he's looking to do that on his own. Okay, so he's going to be an entrepreneur. So I definitely would say if that's the case, go, you know, we recommend a three to six month emergency fund, go to the upper end Uh of that, the six months, you know, especially if he's going to be an entrepreneur, you're going to be in school, Um, you know, go for the upper end of that. And then also with you going to school, you know, one of the biggest priorities right now is for you to go debt free. So any extra cash that you have, I would set aside, you know, for an education fund, you know, of course, we want you to win scholarships. I hope that you get it fully funded with scholarships. But if you do need to cash flow some of that, 
you know, I would take, you know, the money that's over and above that emergency fund and really set that aside for your education. Okay. How great. much is hair school going to cost? Um, so it's about 23000 Okay. And do you have the money now or are you just hoping to cash flow it with scholarships along the way? I do have the money, but obviously I don't want to spend it if I don't have to. We're also trying to pay off our house early, so I'd like to spend that on the house rather than on the school. Mm. Well, for sure, the school is going to be the priority to get through debt free. And if it slows yeah. down the house process, I'm okay with that because I don't want you to go backwards yeah. in this process. And if he's able to for continue sure. working while getting his, you know, his side uh, hustle off the ground, starting his own business, I would rather that than have a gap in income. And so, okay. regardless of what happens, there should be no gap in income, even if it's you guys are hustling, you're doing Uber, you're doing everything it takes to keep income coming in the door, because that's mm -hmm. a recipe for disaster for both of you to just stop working and hope to get through life. For sure. For sure. That's awesome. I'm I would, pumped for you guys. Yeah. And I would also just encourage you to spend a little time researching if there's any programs that specifically help with trade school in your state. So I know here in Tennessee, we have this program called Tennessee Reconnect, which it helps, you know, okay. adults go back to school and get trade certificates. So I would encourage oh, you to cool. see if there's anything like that in your state, because, you know, scholarships are great. But if there's some program that's kind of a direct route, you know, that could be a, uh -huh. a much quicker and easier process. Yeah, I'll definitely look into that. Thank you. Yeah, Absolutely. We're excited Thanks for so you. much for the call, Lindsay. Very cool. And thank you for reading Christina's book. How yeah. awesome is that? I love that. All right. Let's move on to Brittany in Dallas, Texas. Brittany, welcome to the show. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. What's going on? So my question is in regards to an HSA medical account insurance. Okay. Um, so I currently have a – it's open enrollment for my company right now. And I currently have a good traditional – Insurance is plan. that a PPO? Um, I don't know what it is. It's either a PPO or HMO. It, well, it doesn't say. Okay, there's usually either um, a high deductible healthcare plan or a PPO, which is preferred provider organization. Do any of those oh, ring a bell? PPO. Yes. Okay. PPO. And I am looking at this big chart, and a HSA is looking enticing because of the drastic saving on the biweekly contribution, but obviously the deductible is higher. The reason I'm asking about this now is because my husband and I, we do know that ideally we want to start trying for kids at some point next year. So I don't know if now would be a good time to switch from a good traditional insurance to something with a higher deductible, higher maximum out of pocket, that sort of thing. Mm. Well, the nice thing with the high deductible healthcare plan is once you hit that max out of pocket, it should be covered at 100%. And so if you can find one, like my wife, just we just went through this process here at Ramsey, and there was an option that was a slightly lower max out of pocket, um, and then it covered 100%. And the trade-off is you pay a slightly higher premium. And so that might be a good mm -hmm. option for you guys, and I always recommend to have that amount in your emergency fund, depending on where you guys are at in the baby steps. So are you trying to pay off debt right now? No, we're completely done. We're on 456. Oh, I love it. Then let's max out that HSA and make sure we have enough to cover the max out of pocket because then you know, hey, we're covered. Regardless of what happens, we're not going to be on the hook for some crazy medical bill. Okay. So I'm looking at the chart now, and it's saying after I hit my deductible, the non-preventative services, I would pay 20% up until the max out of pocket. So Correct. is that still what you're talking about with the 100% coverage after? After the max out of max pocket. Okay. What so is you would recommend transitioning? Yeah, I mean, if you if everyone's relatively healthy here, and uh, it's a great option. Many, many people here at Ramsey do it. Uh, my wife and I included have the high deductible. So that's how you get the HSA account is through a high deductible health care plan. And then with that, you get the HSA, which is the health savings account. And that allows you to, I love it because it's triple tax benefits. You put the money in completely tax-free so from your gross income. It grows tax-free. You can invest it beyond a certain threshold, and you can withdraw it tax-free for qualified medical expenses. So it's an incredible, incredible option. A lot of it, a lot of them have employer matches. Does yours? Yes, fifteen hundred. Oh, that's incredible. Lovely. So I mean, obviously, I want you to read the fine print, do what makes sense for your family. But if I'm in your shoes, just hearing what I heard, it makes a lot of sense to move over to that high deductible health care plan. Okay. What is the max out of pocket on it? Uh, for the employee plus one is seven thousand. 
Okay. Oh, that's similar to ours. And so if you've got that in the emergency fund, you can max out the HSA as well to have that uh, come out of there. That's a great option. And so I would recommend going that route. You can also talk to, there's usually someone connected to your healthcare plan that you can reach out to. We actually just met with one that was here at Ramsey uh, from Xander Insurance that helped us go, oh, here's what this means. Here's what makes sense based on what you're telling me. So I would reach out to your HR team as well and see if they can get you in touch with someone who can help walk you through the options. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for the call, Brittany. Awesome. And hey, folks, it's open enrollment season. Like, help your HR people out. They're all frantic right now, (laughs) trying to make sure everyone does what they need to do. Uh, So hit those deadlines, make it easy on them, and ask questions. Make sure you do your due diligence because this is big decisions. And bankruptcy, uh, number one leading cause of bankruptcy is medical bills. So you got to get healthcare coverage right. What a fun note to end the hour on, Christina, (laughs) talking about HSAs and PPOs. We love it. You truly do love HSAs. (laughs) I really do. I'm such a nerd. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. We will be back with you before you know it. Do you love a good Dave rant? Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from The Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to The Ramsey Show channel on YouTube. of Ramsey Solutions broadcasting from the pods moving in storage studio. It's the Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm George Camel, host of The Fine Print, the Entree Leadership Podcast, and co-host of Smart Money Happy Hour, joined by Christina Ellis. And we are taking your calls at the number 888-825-5225. We're kicking it off with Jan in Chicago. Jan, how is it going over there? Well, um, I have some school debt and some credit card debt and just looking for some advice on how to restructure our lives so we can get out of this debt. Wow. Well, the fact that you're willing to talk like that means you guys are ready for a change. Absolutely. Sounds like you've had your I've had it moment. Yeah, so you definitely had it. Um, I came to a realization um, with the school debt, I'm actually going to the expense to leave school and look for a job just so that we can get out of debt. Wow. How far are you in your schooling? Um, so I, I've been about a year, uh, close to a year and a half into schooling. Um, I was going to go to uh, law school and then realize I don't think I want to practice. And so it doesn't really make sense for me to continue with a degree. Um, so that costs a pretty penny, of course. So this is your a year and a half into law school? Of course, yeah. Okay. okay. So how much student loan debt and how much credit card debt? Um, so total we have about 108000 in student loan debt and then credit card debt we have about $6,000. Okay. And when you say we, is that your, your spouse? Me and, me and my spouse, correct. Okay. And what's your income household? Right now, um, we just have one income, and it's about 115000 And then you're, you're going to leave school soon. What are you going to do after that? I'm not sure. I'm just looking for, for something, maybe administrative work. Um, I'm just trying to find something because I'm realizing that this debt has turned into kind of a snowball, and um, we're definitely not looking to, to take on more debt. And so... Um, what is your know, undergrad? Yeah. What's your undergrad degree in? Um, political science. Okay. And do you are, do you feel like you have you want to stay completely away from law in any capacity right now, or are you still kind of open to maybe paralegal work or something in the field? I'm open to work in the field, just you know because. And don't really have too much of a choice at this point, um, but it would be nice to kind of pivot if that's possible. But I mean, I've worked in the field for for some time. I was a legal assistant uh, prior to school, so I could always go back to that. I just I don't want you to wait until you're debt free to do something you love. 
And so that's what we're trying to get you plugged yeah. into while you become debt free. And if you can do that and get paid well and actually enjoy doing it, it's going to make this whole experience a whole lot better. Well, and you'll probably make more money doing something that you're passionate about. Like, I think right now it feels really overwhelming and you feel kind of, you know, a lot of, of guilt around leaving this degree and, you know, maybe some shame, but right. you still have a lot of value. And I, it, just because you're leaving law school does not mean you can't have a successful career doing something completely different and get paid really well doing it. Yeah, that's actually pretty encouraging because I was thinking that I kind of just had to take anything to to help us get out of this debt because it's it's a lot. I mean, school loans are, are pretty tough. Yeah, yeah, it's it's overwhelming right now. It feels like you are staring at a mountain, and it's easy to just want to start running as fast as possible, which we do want you to run as fast as possible and be gazelle intense. But we want you to do it with the best strategy, with a career that you love, that you're going to be one of you. You're going to want to be fired up to get up every morning and go to work and take on an overtime job. And you know, anytime the boss says we need somebody to work late tonight, that you're going to go, hey me, hey me, you know, and, and get a bonus right. for doing that like the, the more you're feeling passionate about what you're doing the more you're going to show up you know and want to go above and beyond which often translates into more income yeah and, and that's a really good point that you make um there's nothing worse than being miserable at, at a job and then also trying to pay off debt yeah. um and uh, another issue too is like we have really high rent because we live here in the city um, and so it's close to $3,500 a month. So when I'm thinking about restructuring, we're wondering if it would be better to just like move to the suburbs or um, that's, that's a tough one there too. It makes it harder for us to pay down this debt. Well, is he, is he working in the city? Yes. Okay. So it would be a little bit more of a commute. So there's a trade off there. We don't want him driving two hours each way to work. So is there a trade-off where you could lower your rent to $2,000 a month, live a little further outside of the city, and ha still have them have a reasonable commute? Yes, I think that would be possible. That's something that we're looking into, and I think that would probably make the most sense for us um, because, yeah, like it's, what? we're obviously exceeding our income in debt. What size, like, what size apartment are you renting right now? Right now we're in a two-bedroom. I mean, I know it would be a little bit of a squeeze. There's also just weighing that, you know, do you want to live further out or do you want to go down to a one bedroom or maybe even a studio for a season? Like if living close to the city is a big priority, there's also kind of going a little bit smaller. Do you guys have kids? Um, right now we don't and okay. we're thinking about it, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think either way you go, whether you live a little bit further, you know, get a little bit of a smaller spot or maybe even rent out the other room, um, getting that $3,500. It's going to be compromise either way. So it's you deciding on, but yeah. is, is he on board? Is he on fire like you are to make some changes? Um, absolutely. Um, I'm the one that's kind of driving it, but he's on board with it. So Awesome. Hey, for a lot of people, that's half the battle Seriously. getting their spouse on board. So that's great. Well, I want to I want to leave you with some resources, Jan, so that you feel equipped. And one of those is Ken Coleman, our Ramsey personality and colleague. Uh, he's got an assessment called the Get Clear Career Assessment, because I think right now you're kind of at this crossroads. You've lost a little bit of hope. Uh, that your dreams are shattered, right. and we want to tell right. you that there is hope for you, that you can do work that you love. And this assessment is going to take you about 15 or 20 minutes, and it's going to spit out some amazing results that very clearly show you where your passions, your talents, your mission lie, and give you career right. options of things you can look into. That sounds great. And I also want to get you a copy of Paycheck to Purpose. That's Ken's book. And it's going to help you, you know, go from, you know, just looking for a job that's going to pay off these student loans to, also, to finding a job that gives you purpose that you're excited about, like we talked about earlier, that gets you mm -hmm. fired up. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Absolutely. And let's pile on Financial Peace University. Have you guys been through that as a couple? We have not been through it as a couple. We oh, just you're going to totally love it. Over. Yeah. You're going to love that. So it's nine lessons. I want you to watch all of them together. You can also join a local class. That is the best way to do it because getting around other people who are on the same journey as you, there's nothing like it. Uh, with that, we're going to throw an every dollar premium to help you guys get a plan for your money every single month, make decisions, and uh, you're the boss of the budget until you make the budget, and the budget becomes the boss mm -hmm. of you. 
And that is going to give you right. such freedom because now it's not a fight. It's no, no, we decided we're going to spend mm. this much on food and that's why we're not eating out. And so you guys got this. You have a great income. It's going to go up. You're going to come back into a debt-free scream and I cannot wait for that day. So hang on the line. Austin's going to pick up and give you from paycheck to purpose, the Get Clear Career Assessment, Financial Peace University, and Every Dollar Premium. Austin, you've got some work to do, man. <laughs> Good luck with that. But we love doing it. Congrats. We are cheering you guys on. This is The Ramsey Show. is full of firsts. As the first and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. Listening to the Ramsey Show, I'm George Campbell, joined by Christina Ellis this hour, and we're taking your calls at 888-825-5225. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Find out for yourself about their 100% satisfaction guarantee. It means even if you mismeasure or pick the wrong color, they will remake your blinds for free. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you will save even more. Use the promo code Ramsey to get the best deal. Today's question comes from Bill in Arkansas. I bank with Truist Bank, and they offer a Delta Sky Miles reward debit card. It has a $99 uh, or less, depending on spending, annual fee, but you get one mile for every $2 spent on all purchases except ATM withdrawals. The rewards do not expire. My wife's family lives a few states over, and we are currently inheriting a family business, so we do travel quite a bit. Is this worth it in your opinion? Mm. Oh boy, I'm I'm fired up about this one, Christina. Uh, no, Bill, it is not worth it. Even though it's a debit card, I am not paying to have a debit card. And you just laid out here's here's the deal. You pay ninety nine dollars, but here's the blessing, Christina. You get one mile for every two dollars spent. Mm. Here's the thing. Yeah, let's. When it comes more. to miles. There is no indication of what one mile even means. And so Bill's in Arkansas. And so I did a little pre, pre-show math here. To go from Little Rock to Arkansas, uh, Little Rock to Nashville round trip in December uh, is 31,000 points. So if you're doing the math at home, one mile for every $2 spent, that means 30,000 miles is $60,000 worth of spending for one person to go round trip from Little Rock to Nashville and back. Ouch. So you're going to pay $100 for the annual fee, then spend $60,000 of your net income on God knows what Mm. to go from Little Rock to Nashville and back. That same flight, if you just paid for it on the same airline, Delta, would cost $282. Wow. Enjoy your miles, Bill. (laughs) So no, never let rewards drive decisions. Right. Well, and like, what does that do to the psyche to make you, one, want to make sure you spent enough to make your $99 fee worth it, but then thinking, man, I really want to get enough points to get this flight. So $60,000 is the bar I have to reach. I feel like that encourages spending. Oh, absolutely. And then you feel like you won. You go, hey, we got a free flight. So, Christina, I don't understand (laughs) what the issue is. Yeah, but you spent $60,000 to get it. And so your math is broken here. Uh, So, no... Never do that. And it's one of the reasons, Christina, we launched our very own debit card called Gazelle uh, the other day. And one of the reasons is we're sick of banks screwing people over. Mm. And so we don't fee you to death. There's no annual fee. There's no, we don't even do overdraft because we're like, we don't want you to spend money you don't have. It will just decline. 
And so it's a great way to spend and save the Ramsey way if you want to check that out. But, Bill, I'm not falling for this uh, Sky Miles Rewards debit card, man. Just do a budget, save up for your vacations, pay for the flights. Do your. I like to use Google Flights and Skyscanner and all kinds of online tools to just find the best deal on a flight instead of being beholden to one airline. Right. That's what I was going to say is this is just through Delta. Like if you look around at some of the cheaper airlines, there's a good chance you could find a flight for a hundred bucks anyways. You know, Little Rock to Nashville is not far. We've driven that several times. So one, you could drive if you really want to go. But at the same time, like just shop around. We both love travel. We both love travel deals. We're kind of obsessed with Skyscanner and finding the best flight. And it's like you can do this in a much smarter way. Yes. So uh, don't fall for this, folks. If you're seeing these rewards and you see, well, it's a debit card, so that's helpful. But, oh, wait, there's an annual fee. And so now I have to spend enough to at least cover the annual fee, which is going to cause me to spend enough to cover the annual fee. And so it's a self-fulfilling prophecy here uh, that will cause you to be broke. So, Bill, I hope you say no to this debit card and just stick to a no-fee debit card and don't spend because of the rewards. Thanks for the question, though. It's a yeah. good. It's a good discussion. It's a good discussion because it's very tempting. Like when you see that and you see miles and you see the potential of a free flight, like that's exciting and it can kind of get you stirred up to where you don't really want to look at the math. You're just excited to go somewhere. You're excited to, you know, get on an airplane. That seems very cool. And yes. it's like, wait a minute. When you break this down, it's not really as cool as it seems. It's never worth it. And Christina, we did an entire episode on the fine print about this very topic. It's about yes. credit card rewards, but now that debit cards are starting to try to compete in this weird space, um, we have to watch out for this as well. So you can go listen to it. Uh, it's episode two of the Fine Print podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts, called The True Cost of Credit Card Rewards. And I talked to an ex-employee of Capital One Whoa. who dishes. And she explains how they do tens of thousands of experiments every year on consumers to get them to spend more. And instead of cash back, they went, hey, what if we did like points and miles? Because that's confusing. And it can, you could can be 100,000 points and you feel like you're winning, but really uh, you're a loser. So don't uh, fall for this. Don't fall. You're just a rat in the maze and you get to the cheese and you think you won until you realize, oh my gosh, I'm in a maze. Uh, I'm in a tiny prison. Oh my gosh, that's so sad. They're I know. Studying us like rats. We made Christina sad. <laughs> Thanks, credit card companies. All right, let's go to the phones this hour. Uh, to Kansas City we go. Jackie joins us there. Jackie, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi there. Thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. What's going on? Okay, so my husband is going to retire from the Marine Corps in two and a half years. And we have a small acreage that we bought. Um, it's back in Iowa. And we hope to build a home on that in roughly two and a half years. Um, we have some money saved up, but we're butting heads. <laughs> and so you guys are going to settle this for. Oh, um, boy. this is fun. <laughs> Don't put me in between a Marine. I will not win. <laughs> so we're discussing taking a pause from saving and putting money into our Roth account and our children's education account so we can have less of a mortgage on our home. And then, you know, once the home is built, that's not where the finances end. Um, well, we're going to start like a little bit of a hobby farm um, for our two younger kids. Um, and we homeschool. And so that is going to be, you know, our new life and our new education for our kids as they're growing up. Um, so that's the question. Do we kind of put a hold on saving and getting that money when we're older? Cause we need more money now. Do you, do you need more money as in like you need more money for the down payment or do you already have a down payment? For um, we have a down. Yeah, we have money saved up. Okay. How much do you have saved up? We have $350,000 in our savings account. Just in liquid cash? We have a hundred, yeah. Oh my gosh. You guys are amazing. Get it. <laughs> and we have $110,000 in the stock market. Okay. What so, is that in? Is it in know, mutual funds or single stocks or what? I think it's I think it's mutual funds. I think it's pretty safe. Um, but that's non-retirement? But, yeah, that's non-retirement. Okay. And we have, yeah, we've got, and then we have money in our, our Roth retire, uh, retirement as well. And about how much do you anticipate the home build is going to cost? Um, with the new higher prices, I mean, we were always, we've been saving for 20 years and we've always had it in our mind about $500,000. Um, 
but that's kind of creeping up. Maybe it'll go down. We're not sure. And I know interest rates are going up. So, I mean, our goal was just to build a house. Well, it sounds <laughs> like you're going to be able to pay cash for it. Um, yeah, we're just, we're just wanting to save a little bit more, yes, and, and get to that point. Um, well, and that's kind of the but, debate, right? Like, whether so the debate is do we yeah, pause like, all of our investing in order to stockpile the cash to cover the home build in yeah. full, or do we? I mean, if you guys had it, took even took on a mortgage, you're talking about like a forty thousand dollar loan. Well, it might be upwards. You know, with the with the home building cost, it might be more like you know six hundred, seven hundred. Um, but then the cost don't end after that because we have it's a it's a it's a just a cornfield right now. Um, and so we're wanting to build that up. And so we need equipment. We need tractors. We and need this is all just for the kids to have a hobby? <laughs> well, it's like our passion is what we want to do with our lives after the Marine Corps. Well, We've been I would take, around for take your time years. with that. Cash flow it as you go. Um, you can pause investing for a short while, but I wouldn't do it for very long, not more than six months well, or a year with, as you with, save up. With that much saved up, I'm still doing four and five, steps four and five. I'm still investing for retirement and saving for my kids' college yes. at the same time because you guys have a lot saved up. You're beyond you know, what you need and for a 20% And if it takes longer investment. for the home build by six months because of that, that's okay. You will live to tell the tale. You can rent for a little while, but I want this thing to be a blessing and not a curse. So take your time, move slowly, and you'll get to that dream. Look, I love real estate, and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information. This is The Ramsey Show. It's a show about you and your life and your money. And you can call us at 888-825-5225. Some say the advice is worth what you pay for it. I'm George Campbell, joined by Christina Ellis this hour. And uh, Christina, there's a clip I want to play from a 2018 shareholder meeting with uh, our friends. I wish they were my friends. Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Very, very wealthy old men. And uh, it's talking about cryptocurrency, and I'll tell you why I played it afterwards. But let's get your take on this clip from the 2018 shareholder meeting. There's nothing being produced in the way of value from the asset. That, that uh, You also have the problem that it draws in a lot of charlatans and that sort of thing who are trying to create various sorts of exchanges or whatever it may be it you know it, it's something where where people who are of less than stellar character see an opportunity to uh, clip people who are trying to get rich because their neighbors are getting rich buying this stuff that neither one of them understands it will come to a bad ending charlie well i like cryptocurrencies a lot less than you do <laughs> And so, to me, it's just dementia. And I think the people who are professional traders that go into trading cryptocurrencies, it, it's, it's just disgusting. It's like somebody else is trading turds and you decide I can't be left out. <laughs> 
gosh. George. I love this so much. I feel like you would fit in well on that stage, I talking think, about your disdain for yes. crypto. Yes, and that, yeah, I've always thought I was an old soul, and I'm like, these are the guys I want to hang out with. These are my people. Warren and Charlie need a podcast. Okay, so let me recap in case you didn't hear what they said. Warren Buffett said that cryptocurrency draws in a lot of charlatans who are trying to create various sorts of exchanges, whatever it may be. It's something where people who are of less than stellar character see an opportunity to clip people who are trying to get rich because their neighbor is getting rich, buying the stuff that neither one of them understands. It will come to a bad ending. His friend Charlie, vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren's uh, investment firm holding company, said, crypto is like somebody else trading turds and you decide I can't be left out. (laughs) And that is the definition of FOMO and what this kind of get-rich-quick crypto greed culture has turned into. And there's a reason I played this clip from four years ago. Who knew it was foreshadowing, Christina? Because the news came out this week that one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges, FTX, just filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and the collapse is being compared to Enron and Bernie Madoff, and it is a wild, wild story. So the company's founder, Sam Bankman-Fried, faces allegations that he secretly transferred $10 billion from FTX to Alameda Research, which is his hedge fund that also filed for bankruptcy. And there's, he's facing a criminal probe in the Bahamas for this, Ooh. and uh, it, it's not going to end well. And he went from a $16 billion net worth to a $0 net worth because of this collapse. And all of the users that have accounts may never see the money again. Oh. Their accounts went down to zero, and now they're going, where, where, what, where happened here? And uh, a lot of people have compared this to Lehman. Uh, I would compare it to Emron, one said. And uh, this is crazy, uh, just a crazy story. And it really goes back to what those old guys were talking about, which are yes. some of the wealthiest, smartest guys in the financial world, which is that there's so much fraud and delusion in the cryptocurrency world. And it's a sad thing to see. I think so many people just want it to work because they want that get rich quick feeling. They want to have success instantly. It's been interesting talking to people who, you know, are obsessed with crypto, being somebody in the money space, you know, it's like, I want to tell me more. Tell me more. I want to understand why you're so passionate about this. You're so much nicer than I am, Christina. (laughs) Well, it's hard because like a lot of them don't have answers for how it works. It's like, wait, how is your money safe? You don't don't understand the blockchain, Christina. It's like, this is the future, man. (laughs) You're so out of touch. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. And and here we are. It, at its peak, it was the third largest crypto exchange, and it's just gone kaput, and millions of dollars worth of assets just unaccounted for. Oh, that's scary. Very scary. And so I love, I'm a big fan of Warren Buffett. So much wisdom. Uh, one of the be- wealthiest people on planet Earth, $97 billion net worth. Whew. And uh, I just wanted to share some of the ways that he lives that I think we can all take away and live a little bit smarter, a little less uh, frivolous, if you will. So here's an article that covers some of that. One, uh, buy a modest home, he says. Mm. He still lives in the same home in Omaha, Nebraska that he had since the 50s. And the dude has as much – I mean he could buy – Islands for days. <laughs> right. I love this one that says, don't be afraid to use coupons in front of friends. <laughs> My man. <laughs> and he talks about, or I guess Bill Gates talks about a story where they were at a McDonald's in Hong Kong and Buffett offered to pay and he dug into his pocket and pulled out coupons to pay for Bill Gates meal. <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> that's that's a mental Another image. one, look for sales and deals. This one I'm personally passionate about. I'm very, I call myself bougie frugal. Ooh. I like the finer things in life, but I'm still going to get a deal on it, and I'm going to be very intentional. Um, and this is something that he's very passionate about, is doing the research. Mm. Can I get a better deal on this? Negotiate, all of that stuff. That's good. I like that he also says don't gamble, that gambling is a tax on ignorance. I think that's really important, especially now with all the online gambling. And it's like gambling is getting so mainstream. It's you watch a football game, and there's all these different commercials encouraging you to gamble. Well, and you can do sports betting, and you can bet on the – tiniest little pieces of the game yeah and you think well i'm just having some fun and all of a sudden you're like i just blew 500 bucks this month yeah or i'm hooked on it and i feel like i can't stop i mean it's becoming an addiction an actual legitimate addiction so. or you think i'm going to be the next powerball winner and win two billion dollars <laughs> right. uh there's mu- there's a much higher chance you get struck by lightning a thousand times in the same spot than <laughs> winning that powerball uh and we've we've called the lottery attacks on the poor and very similar to what buffett says here 
Yeah. And then he also says, forget fancy food, which I feel like we can all get on board with that. <laughs> you know, he said he he literally could afford lobster, you know, for every single meal. But he's really cautious with what he eats and is mindful of that. So, I mean, for all, all y'all on beans and rice, you know, maybe you maybe you stick with that a you're little bit. You're just living longer. like you're Warren just... <laughs> Buffett. That's all. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, Dave's always said, you know, you eat enough lobster, it tastes like soap eventually. <laughs> And so even the finer things in life, you know, at some point it's, it loses its its specialness, if you will. Another one, don't upgrade possessions unless you have to. Buffett famously used the Nokia flip phone for years, although he's moved on to an iPhone. My Ooh. man. You know, he he has standards, Christina. He's like, I'm not getting an Android. All right. Oh, like I still want to enjoy life. Oh, that's a good one. That's awesome. I like that he also said pick inexpensive hobbies. His favorite hobby is playing bridge and that if he ever went to jail, he would hope that his friends in jail would play with uh, play bridge with him. Wow. <laughs> like, Please don't go to jail, Warren. We need you. You're a voice of truth in a world gone mad. Uh, the last one here that I think is fun is forget fancy clothing. Yes. You know, just go the Steve Jobs route. Just wear a turtleneck every day. You think I should do that, Christina? I'm on board with that. Uh, I like simplifying. I get, I'd get too claustrophobic. There's too much fabric <laughs> for me, guys. Let's stop it at the, at the neck. You, you don't need any more than that. <laughs> oh, good stuff there. A lot of timeless wisdom, though, in a lot of what they said. And I've, I've said on the show now for oh, months and months, if you follow the trends, you will fall for the traps. Mm. And any time something comes on the horizon that everyone gets a little you know, starry-eyed about, I go, oh, I'm going to step back. Is this, does this have a proven track record? What's behind this thing? And Warren Buffett said he wouldn't buy all the crypto in the world for $25, all the Bitcoin, because it produces nothing. And you can see what happens when nothing is produced. It's a house of cards, and the Ooh. whole thing can just collapse. And so only invest in things with long-term track record, even when it's boring. And that's what we found in our millionaire study, is that it's 401ks and paid-for real estate, and IRAs, and mutual funds, that's what causes long-term wealth. It's what causes you to keep it. Yeah, and it may not look as fun and flashy in the moment. You may not, you know, have instant success, but it's what is going to stand the test of time. Mm. Yeah, and I've, I've made the analogy that it's like popcorn in the microwave. And you've been there, Christina, when it goes one second too long in the microwave, and it's burnt. You're like, how did the, it was in there one second too long. I had 16 billion in the bank the other day and now it's zero. That's exactly it. And you're going to get burnt, Christina, if Ooh. you live the microwave lifestyle. And so I need everyone listening to be a crock pot in a world full of microwaves. It tastes better. You don't have to worry about it. No one's freaking out about what's on the crock pot. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And so be patient. The Bible says, Proverbs 13, 11, wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. So good. Timeless wisdom right there. More of The Ramsey Show coming your way. that feeling you get when you finally remember to leave your keys by the front door so the next morning when you're running late they're right where they're supposed to be yeah you want to go and high five your past self for being so smart and planning ahead well here is one of those opportunities we are heading into the holiday season where our brains are focused on buying presents thawing turkeys and making sure we still have that one ugly christmas sweater for the party in a couple weeks and then all of a sudden you just blink and it's january and we feel behind on everything that doesn't have to be the way you start off the new year. Make plans now to start the new year strong by joining us for Building Wealth Live right here in Nashville, Tennessee on January the 12th. We're also headed to Indianapolis, Austin, Salt Lake City, and Anaheim with dates into the spring. And this is a one-night event that will help you kick off 2023 feeling confident about your finances even in this crazy economy. 
So join Dave Ramsey, myself, Rachel Cruz, Ken Coleman, Dr. John Deloney, as we walk you through a simple but proven plan to pay off debt and build wealth. It is possible. And passes for this start at just 39 bucks, but seats are limited for this event. So head to RamseySolutions.com slash events to reserve your seat for our Building Wealth Live in Nashville today. It will sell out. Don't miss it. Your future self will thank you for it. That's RamseySolutions.com slash events. I'm George Campbell, joined by Christina Ellis this hour. This is The Ramsey Show. It's a free call at 888-825-5225. Jessica joins us up next in Miami. Jessica, welcome to the show. Hi, George. Hi, Christina. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. How can we help today? Okay, so I'm going to try to make this brief. Um, So in 2020, I got furloughed, and eventually I left my job in January of 2021. And my 401k just kind of sat in my retirement account that that whole time, Um, up until about last month, actually. I had that transferred over into a traditional IRA account with my bank, with my bank that I use. And so my husband and I um, recently got very serious about paying off our debt, and we are on baby step number two. We've paid everything off with the exception of one credit card that we will pay off by the end of this month, and that will leave us with just our student loan debt. Um, So I have about 29,000 in student loan debt and my husband has about 8,000. Now going back to that retirement account, I have about $32,000 just sitting, um, like I said, in that that, um, traditional IRA account. Um, it's, I haven't done any transactions. I initially, I, I wanted to um, use that as my retirement investment account, but before I, I do that, I just wanted to see if it would make sense to use that to go ahead and pay off my balance and just leave my husband's $8,000 student loan debt. I am so glad you called Jessica to talk you <laughs> off of the ledge of robbing your retirement <laughs> and your future with all kinds of penalties and interest. I'm glad. I'm so glad I called too then. <laughs> no, we, we never recommend robbing your retirement unless you're facing a bankruptcy or some kind of insane situation. But you guys got this. You can use your future okay. income to pay this down. How long is it going to take to pay right. off the rest? So we pay about $2,000 a month. So there's about, what, what is that, uh, 29 and 8? 30, Seven. about 38,000 in there. So about, about 18, 19 months, maybe. If okay. If we can do that 2,000 every month. Yeah. And that'll put you a, a total yeah. timeline of what for your whole debt-free journey? Uh, yeah, about a year and a half. Oh, you mean total? Yeah. Um, so we've been doing it about six months right now. So it'll be about two years, probably. That's total. spot on. That's exactly the average yeah. amount of time it takes. If you're gazelle intense, <laughs> you're following this stuff, 18 to 24 months is the sweet spot to pay off your debt. Okay. And so... Uh, you guys have got this. I know you're you're just now really excited, and you're like, what else can accelerate this? Oh, there's a pile of money over here. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're right. You're keep right. that Thank excitement, you. though. Keep that excitement. I love the intensity. I mean, that's where we want you. We want you to have that gazelle Thank intensity. You. But, you know, just if Thank there's you. anything you're going to do to throw more fuel on the fire, you know, think of things that are, you know, going to be extra income. Maybe there's somewhere else you can cut back. But definitely don't rob right. your retirement. Okay. That makes total sense. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. And if you need more encouragement, go pop those numbers in, whatever's in your IRA, put it into our investing calculator at RamseySolutions.com and then look 20 years out. Look what that money turned into. And so robbing that down to zero and instead of letting compound growth do its work, uh, on top of the fact that if you withdrew that money, you're going to have penalties, it's going to be taxed. It is never, never worth it to take that kind of hit. Well, because the ultimate goal where we want to truly see, truly see you in 10 years, we want you to be baby step millionaires, you know, in 10 to 15 years. So it's like that that IRA, it's a huge part of you getting to that real next level. Like we want you to be ultimately successful in the long term. And so we don't want you to take any short term, you know, kind of get out of jail free cards that could actually hurt that long term trajectory. So you're going to get there. We're excited for you. And I hope that whenever, you know, you're done in a year and a half, we see you right there on that stage screaming out that you're debt free. Yes. And if anyone out there is thinking about cashing out of their 401k, their IRAs, number one, because they're scared of the market, number two, because they want to pay off some debt, please let me talk you off the ledge right now. Do not do that. And if you're not working with an investment professional like a Smart Vester Pro that we have at RamseySolutions.com, you need to work with one because they're so good at talking you off the ledge, showing you long-term track records, being the voice of truth in a world that's kind of gone mad and we feel like... All the anxiety, I'm seeing my account go down. I need to cash out. Cash out. 
Oh. And inflation and all the different things. I think people are feeling a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety. So just keeping that level headedness is key, especially in the season, going into the holidays, seeing the market down, oh, yeah. all these things add it up together. Stay the course. Yeah. It can produce some some not great decisions. So mm. Yeah. Glad you talked people off the ledge, George. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Jake joins us up next in Madison, Wisconsin. Jake, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. How are you today? Doing great. What's going on with you? Good. Um, so I am a CPA out of Madison, Wisconsin. Um, and I have a girlfriend who is also works in uh, Madison, Wisconsin area. And we're both 25. And she currently rents, and I currently live at home with my parents. Um, I've accumulated quite a bit of money, um, a little over a hundred grand, I would say. And she has about thirty-five thousand in debt total. Um, and that might play into the conversation later. But my main question is: she has a. We're looking to move in together, right? And she has a lease that's up in about a month. And I'm a, I guess I'm on the fence whether I want to take the leap and start paying rent and make that split decision in the next month to move in and have those expenses or hold off and then potentially buy a house or something like that in the next year. Um, How serious is this girlfriend? Um, we've been dating for about a year. Um, we've known each other for a couple of years now. What's holding holding you from asking her to marry you? Um, I, I guess nothing, nothing much. Um, I guess we would we're almost at that level. I think when we're starting to talk big decisions like moving in together and finances and combining finances, yeah. I mean that's such an important conversation to have because those are really huge commitments. And money fights and money problems are one of the number one reasons relationships don't work out. And when you move in together, you are just it's a recipe for disaster when it comes to finances because we haven't combined finances and now she's contributing towards you paying down the mortgage, but she has no real uh, buy-in into this. And so I've only seen it gone poorly. And so I would, I would recommend you to not have her move in, whether you rent or buy, until you guys are married. Um, and if you're ready to buy a house, regardless of the relationship status, that's okay if you want to do that, as long as you're debt-free with an emergency fund uh, and the payment's going to be no more than a, uh, 25% of your take-home pay on a 15-year fixed. Are you at that point? Um, I, w- I would say, you're, are you just talking about buying a house in general? Yes. And at that level of, I, I could definitely buy a house right now if I wanted to, yes. Okay. Well, I would still tread slowly because, as Dave likes to say, as soon as you're married, uh, she wants a different house. And so, you know, if this is a serious relationship, I might put pause in the home buying process and see, hey, is this going to be something I, I really pursue uh, towards engagement, towards marriage? And then we're going to make that decision together. And if you keep stacking cash in the meantime, there's nothing wrong with that. So okay. I appreciate the call, man. That's it. You're at a crossroads of some really big decisions, and I hope you do it with a lot of patience and not a lot of impulse. Yeah, and maybe, I mean, the lease is up in a month. Maybe figure out a solution. You know, maybe she can rent month to month, to month for a while, because whenever we have those time pressures, it can lead us to, yeah. you know, make hasty decisions that often aren't the best choice. Or here's a wild solution. Just sign a new lease. Life goes on. It's amazing how that works. Appreciate the call. More of The Ramsey Show. We'll be back with you real soon. Have you been inspired to make a change with your money? Want to know where to start? Take our three-minute money quiz to get a plan you can follow. Go to RamseySolutions.com and search for Get Started to get a plan for your money. headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studio, it's The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm your host, Christina Ellis, joined by my co-host, George Hamill. Give us a call, 888-825-5225. First up, we've got Brian calling from Greenville, South Carolina. Hey, Brian, welcome to the show. Hey, guys, thanks for taking my call. 
Thanks for calling. How can we help? Um, so I'm working through baby steps, um, four, five, and six. I'm contributing like 21% to my 401k, but I want to know if I should back that down and tackle the house. Well, how much do you have left on the house? Um, I just bought it two years ago. And I owe 192. What made you decide to go with 21%? That's very specific. Um, so I put in the 15%, you know, that Dave recommends my company matches 4% and then every year they automatically bump up my contribution, uh, 1%. So I guess I'm contributing 17% myself and then my company matches 4%. Oh, okay. okay. Can you, can you stop the automatic, automatic upgrade in your 401k there? Yeah, I can. Okay. Yeah, I'd bump that back down to 15% until the house is paid off, and then you can go hog wild. Um, so should I back mine down to 11% and let my company... No. You, you'd go okay. to 15% of your income, regardless of what's happening with the match. Okay. And do you have kids? I, I have one. Okay. Are you saving for college? Uh, yeah, I started a uh, 529 for him a year ago. Awesome. Great. Well, you're doing awesome. I mean, you're pretty close to being right on plan just with that little 2% change. I mean, you're right on, on track. And I love your motivation to pay off the house. I love that you're getting so fired up. What's your timeline to pay it off? Yeah. That's, <laughs> I got a plan for about eight years. Oh, I think you can do better than that. What's your income? Um, my base salary is 60000 but with overtime, I, I do close to... 70, 72. That's awesome. And you've got some margin to put on the house once you get that 2% back? How much are we talking towards the extra towards the mortgage? Uh, right now, I do minimum $100 a month, but I get yearly bonuses through work that are, you know, a few thousand dollars. Um, I have a couple side hustles, and any extra money kind of goes towards that. I love it. And your income is going to go up over the next eight years. Yeah, hopefully, anyway. Yeah, you're a sharp dude. And so that's going to speed up this uh, payoff. So absolutely, I'd bump your contribution down to 15%, keep saving for college, and then any extra margin you can throw, put that onto the mortgage. Way to go. Yeah, way to go. You're you're definitely you know in a really good spot, and I love that you're just walking out the example of how to do the baby steps well. And I also love the match. That's just such a great We thing. love a match around here. <laughs> we love a great match. All right, next up, we have Luke calling from Indianapolis, Indiana. Hey, Luke, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, thanks for calling. How can we help? Um, so I feel like my um, my budget, like my margins each month, um, I'm not quite achieving any of my goals. Um, I'm trying to be as aggressive with as I can with my uh, student loan repayments, but I also have a couple other things I'm saving for. Um, my truck has not been super dependable, so I'm saving to replace that. And then I'm also getting married um, next year, so I'm kind of saving for those expenses and moving out and stuff. And so I'm looking at my account each month, and I'm not really getting anywhere because I feel like I'm spreading it all too thin. So maybe you guys could help me prioritize. Yeah, well, congrats on getting engaged. That's exciting. you got some cool things on the horizon. So how much debt do you have? Thank you. Uh, right now I have about 19000 okay. all in student loans. All right. And what's your income? Uh, about 50000 All right. And when you're, you're doing your monthly budget, it, do you think it's a spending problem? Is it because you're saving toward the car and the wedding? What, where do you think the problem lies? Is it an income I problem? Really, I'm not, it, it could be an income problem. I'm not spending anything. And part of it could be maybe it's, maybe it's not necessary to save as much as I think, like for the car and for the wedding. But um, – like, I'm saving pretty much 50% of my income goes towards my debt. So I live off of the rest, and, you know, I'm saving about, I don't know, four or $500 a month. And I guess I'm just not sure, should I make less aggressive payments on my debt and save just kind of for this season? Or How is this truck on its last leg? You say um, you're trying to replace your car? It's... It's hard to say. It's I've had to take it to the shop 
pretty much every month. Nothing major, but $150 here, $300 here. And that, and that's also kind of slowing down my, my saving. Mm. What do you do for a living? I'm a teacher. A teacher. Okay. And are you doing any sort of side hustle or anything to make additional income? Um, I'm not. The primary reason is um, I teach band, and so I have a lot of after-school commitments, um, a lot of extracurricular activities. Um, so I don't exactly have a normal teacher schedule. Yeah, no band can get pretty intense. Um, what about off seasons? Do you have you know seasons where you're not you know having after-school hours with the band? Yeah, my summers are definitely um, available. I've I've worked over the summers in the past and been able to make you know, three or four thousand dollars in in a month or two, like June and July. Yeah, I think I mean, right now, I love that you're taking 50 percent of your income and throwing it towards the debt. I think right now it's just that season where it's a challenge. You got to be gazelle intense. You got to kind of go through the slog. This is the not fun part of it. But, you know, it's going to get you to a spot where once that nineteen thousand dollars is out of your life, once that debt is gone, that money is going to be able to really go towards savings and you're going to see a lot of progress. I know it's frustrating right now because you don't see that savings progress. You're going, oh, man. Um, but it's going to it's going to get there. I think it's just kind of one of those seasons where you got to stay the course and keep pushing through. Do you know how much you are having to pay for this wedding? Have you guys talked about with the families who's paying what? Do you have a clear number? Yeah. So um, the family is able to contribute pretty much everything for the wedding. Um I'm paying for the honeymoon, and then I'm also wanting to save some money just for, like, the first month rent and, you know, the deposit, and I have no furniture. So I live at home right now. So, I mean, I'll be moving out for the first time. So I've also been saving a little bit for that. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you're doing all the right things. I'd get a clear number of what I'm going to need for all those wedding expenses. If that's $4,000 for honeymoon plus, 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 then we backtrack that out and go, all right, every month I need to save $400 to have $4,800 12 months from now. And so you start to do that kind of math and that gives you your goal. And if that means I need a side hustle, then go get you a side hustle for a season. Yeah. And I think that's just important to remember that it is for a season. You know, you're coming up on that marriage and it's going to feel so good to do it debt free and to be really seeing that traction with your wife as you're able to throw that money into savings. We'll be right back. Give us a call. 888-825-5225. This is The Ramsey Show. gone through FPU, chances are it's because someone in your life lit a fire under you. Mom and dad gave it to you as a gift, your pastor offered it at your church, or that one friend wouldn't stop talking about it. So you finally took the class, started working the baby steps, and now everything's different. Your entire future changed. Now you can light a fire under someone else. You can give someone you care about Financial Peace University and share the same hope you've discovered with money. And with Christmas coming, this is the perfect time to do it. And when you give FPU as a gift, they get more than just a course. They'll also get the premium version of every dollar so that they can start living on a budget. Plus, they can even join in on group calls with our financial coaches, which I've been on those calls. These are amazing. This Christmas, give the people you care about a gift that actually matters. And that's hope. That's freedom. To buy FPU as a gift, go to RamseySolutions.com slash give FPU. That's RamseySolutions.com slash give FPU. George, so we get some inst- interesting messages on Instagram. Some yes. of them are a little wild, and some of them are actually pretty eye-opening. And yes. you got one our recently. Fan, our fans like to send me this stuff because they know that it, they know what riles me up, Christina. <laughs> and Tosh sent me this. Uh, she got an email from her credit union in California, 
And it's a new product from the credit union. It's called the Making Memories Loan. Oh, gosh. So let me read you their, their marketing copy here. They have like beautiful photos of like graduations and weddings and families having a great time. And it says, you can focus on enjoying the occasion. Altura is there to help with the expense. Ugh. Oh, what a blessing. It goes on to say, whether it's a wedding, family reunion, graduation party, or any other type of celebration, Altura can help make the making with the Making Memories loan. It's quick and simple, great low rates, no collateral needed, up to 30 grand with just your signature. Oh, what a gift. What this a is gift. from the credit union that has a whole bunch of strings attached. We'll put you in debt for years. It's lovely and pretty and light and airy. What gets me is this, <laughs> like, they're going to pull at our, um, our emotional heartstrings to mm. go, like, do what's right for your family, even if you're broke, so that you can make a memory. That's just kind of gross, it's actually. It's extra gross. You know, it's funny. I was listening to the radio the other day, and I heard a commercial for a cash advance company, and the language around it was similar. It was really kind of disgusting. They were like, you can take control of your finances. You can be the person in your family. You're struggling with bills. You're struggling to do things. If you take out this loan, you're in control. At you're in charge. 200% interest. <laughs> right? Yeah. And like of all companies to be promising that, you are not the company. Well, I expect, see, I expect that from a payday lender and cash advance f- folks. I don't expect it from your local credit union. Be oh, better. Gosh. Be better. Be better. Unforgettable moments. Uh, oh, I, I just the the flowery, pretty language. It's just sad because you know somebody's falling for that. You know the reason they're doing it is because for someone that worked. Yes. And Don't now, be that someone. The Don't memory comes with payments every month with interest, and now you get to relive that memory every month when you send that credit union your payment. Oh, angrily going well. Guess there goes that vacation. Yeah, that's painful. Ugh. All right, let's go to the phones. Up next, we have Paul calling from Seattle, Washington. Hey, Paul, welcome to the show. Hello. Uh, hello to the Dave Ramsey team. Uh, really glad uh, for you for taking my call. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for calling. Uh, How can we help? Yeah, I have uh, kind of a happy problem. I probably know what uh, uh, what you're going to say, but uh, but here's where I'm at. Uh, recently, I was very fortunate to land a job that pays significantly higher than what I was making uh, previously, and with a different pay structure. Wow. And I have a mortgage, and with the uh, added income, I'm wondering how I should think about uh, putting towards my mortgage versus uh, adding more towards my retirement. Um, yeah, that's that's my question. Well, con- it. congrats on the pay bump. That's great. So wh- what is your income now? Yeah, right now it's it's an all cash uh, income, uh, uh, about 765000 a year. Whoa, 765000 a year? What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a software engineer. In Seattle. All right. I'm, I could probably yes, guess who it's for. That's a very impressive, man. Good for you. You must be a very good engineer. I don't know about that, but yeah, I consider myself lucky to to have landed the job. I love it. Okay, so what is your mortgage? What's left on it? Uh, it's uh, one point three million is left of my mortgage. Uh, it's uh, it's a six two point six percent interest rate. I pay about six thousand five hundred per month, and to get to get the lowest interest rate, I opted for a seven year ARM, which was offering at that point uh, the lowest interest rate. Ooh. So there are six years left on the ARM, and that could change. That is correct. Okay. Do you think you could pay it off in six years? I think so. Uh, six years, it might be tight, but uh, I think I should be. I was uh, with the new income, I should be able to. Yeah, because that's uh, doing the math here. That's throwing two hundred sixteen grand of your seven sixty five. Obviously, high taxes there. So I don't know what you're taking home out of that seven sixty five. Probably closer to three fifty. Yeah. yeah, three three eighty three ninety is what I take home. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think that's doable. Do you think you could throw two hundred grand a year at this thing? Um, I, I I think so. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering should I should I use some of that towards my? I'm already uh, probably maxing out my 401k, Roth IRA, ma- uh, mega backdoor Roth, HSA, FSA. Oh, that's uh, amazing. I can also I can do more towards like a, with a traditional um, brokerage account. So should I do a little bit of that, or should I just go to go towards my mortgage? I would cap it at 15%. And so whatever gets you there from that, you know, obviously that's a giant number from 765 and you take 15% of that, that's 114 grand. And Mm -hmm. so if you've already maxed out everything and there's still money left over to get to that 15%, you can throw that chunk in a taxable brokerage account to kind of finish it out. I see. Do you have any kids? Uh, Yeah, I have a one-year-old. Okay. Have you started a 529? 
Yes, I have. Okay, great. You're I mean, you're just a rock, a rock star. star. I'm, right? I'm just so excited for you. I'm like this guy. I mean, are you already a millionaire? Uh, I don't know. My house is probably at uh, about two two million. So adding all of that up and my pre- some of my, some of the stocks I have from my previous job, probably close to yeah, I, I'd say so. Wow. Could That's you a- cash out of those stocks at this point? Uh, I can. I will have to pay a lot of capital gains though, because I did have quite a lot of gains uh, on mm. those stocks. This may be a silly question, but I just want to ask it just in case. You don't have any other debt, do you? Uh, no, no okay, other debt. Good. I love it. Yeah, I mean, you can. I would work with the tax pro to look at the kind of tax structures and what you would owe if you did certain things. Uh, but it may be really cool to cash out of some of those stocks, maybe over a period of time, so that you don't have as much of a tax burden and uh, pay off the house. So wow, that's so cool. That's Thank amazing. Uh, there, there's one more thing uh, the, uh, about my situation. So I, I'm an immigrant in this country. I'm on a work visa. So just thinking about uh, like a worst case situation. So uh, if, if I lose my job and I'm not able to get another job, I might have to leave the country. It, does that change your answer at all in terms of paying off mortgage or versus putting toward, uh, towards the retirement? No, it doesn't. Because if you were if you had to leave the country for some reason, I would sell the property, leaving you with a giant chunk of money. And all the money you're putting into that mortgage is now built in to the sale of the home. You're going to get it all back in equity. I see. Okay. Yeah, you're doing great. This is this is amazing. You're going to be able to leave quite the legacy to your child and build quite the nest egg. It's you're you're killing it. I had to almost blink for a second when he said his income. I thought he said seventy five thousand, and then I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. Well, those uh, those Seattle software engineers, Christina, they make buku bucks, and of course in Seattle. It's very expensive. There's high taxes, and so it's kind of like a Silicon Valley level situation. But man, I'll I'll take seven hundred sixty-five thousand dollars even with high taxes. That's That's impressive. Great way to build some wealth. I love the motivation. We've had so many people call today about wanting to pay off their house and getting excited about paying off their house. But I think it's still important to kind of have that discussion of how important it is to still save for retirement. Of course, you know the last caller, he's being aggressive with retirement still. But there's been some calls where people are tempted to stop retirement investing just to pay off the house. What would you say to those people who are kind of feeling that pull to stop investing? Well, I think we have to have a long-term mindset and think about, I want to be able to retire in 20 years and not have my kids have to cover the bill. I want my kids to not have the burden of student loans. So let me make sure I invest 15%, my kid's college is taken care of, and the house will get paid for. And if it slows it down, that's okay. We got to think long-term. Yes, we love the motivation. We love how inspired you are, but we, we're, we're in it for the long game. We're trying to... There's more to life than just paying off the house. Right. We want you to be baby step millionaires, and that means focusing on all areas, following the steps, step by step. We'll be right back. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Christina Ellis, joined today by my co-host, George Camel. We're taking your calls at 888-825-5225. Next up, we have John calling from Los Angeles, California. Hey, John, welcome to the show. Hi. How can we help? Uh, I had an insurance question, life insurance. Um, I'm 70 years old, and I have a term life insurance policy policy. It's good until um, 2025, and it's costing me about 200 a month. And my uh, financial advisor said that I should get a whole life insurance now while I'm still 70 instead of waiting until I'm a couple years older. And it's going to, I've already um, applied for it and I can get it, but it's going to be like $1,165 a month. And I was just wondering if it would be better to hold off, let my other term life run out, and then try to get another term life or to try to get a whole life. Did your agent quote you for another term life, or did he just offer you whole life? 
They just offered me whole life. Mm. Can I tell you what's actually going on here, John? Pardon me? Can I tell you what's actually happening here? Yeah. Your financial advisor is just a whole life salesman. And the reason he's pushing whole life is because he's making a giant spread on that premium. And he's going to make very little comparatively on a term life policy. Yeah, the fact that he didn't even offer you or quote you the term life is a pretty big red flag. So tell us a little bit more about your financial situation. Um, Do you have any debt? Um, I have a house payment. That's the only thing. What's in retirement? Um, I have Social Security and a retirement from the IBEW. Okay, what's that amount to? It's not a lot. It's only about thirty eight hundred a month. Okay. So the idea with term life is that by the time it's over, you're self insured and you'd be able to cover any costs. Um, so if you don't have that ability to cover those costs, I would still steer you to another term life policy, even though it's going to be expensive. But it still won't be nearly as expensive as that whole life policy. Right. That's what I was thinking. I I'm just. He's trying to tell, and the whole life that they're talking about is three hundred thousand, and the term that I have now is five hundred thousand. Yeah, it's because whole life sucks, and it's super expensive. And uh, as an example, a two hundred fifty thousand dollar policy might cost you two sixty a month on your premiums with whole life, but with a term life policy, it might cost you thirteen bucks a month. So it's astronomically cheaper uh, for the same amount of coverage. And the money you save, you can invest the difference if you've got it. And whole life is terrible because it tries to do two things at once. It tries to be an investment vehicle and an insurance vehicle, and it ends up not being great at either one. So if I'm you, honestly, in your shoes, I'm firing the financial advisor and saying, hey, it's been great working with you. Uh, sayonara. And you can go connect with a better financial advisor called SmartVestor Pro at RamseySolutions.com who isn't going to steer you towards these crappy whole life policies. So wishing you the best, John, with these decisions, but run far away from this. Yeah, that's... Ugh, it just breaks my heart when financial advisors, who you go to because you trust them with your biggest life decisions and your biggest money decisions, steer you to these crappy products, also they can get a bigger cut. That's just sad. That it feels like such me. a cash grab. But thank you for calling. I'm glad you know you did have that gut check that yeah. made you go, this just doesn't feel right. Thank and you for that, John. Hopefully we, we talked him off the ledge. Yeah. Up next, we have Julie calling from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hey, Julie, welcome to the show. Hi. Hey. So um, I'm going to jump right in. So I'm working two full-time jobs right now um, and physically just kind of feel like I'm killing myself. Um, so I'm wondering, does it make sense to pay for a certification um, and go through some training that would allow me to take an online job, even though I'm you know, still dreaming in debt and all of those things? Well, how much debt do you have? About 60000 Okay. And what, what kind of work are you doing right now with these two full-time jobs? So I am a teacher and then I work in a factory at night. Wow. You are hustling. Those are not easy jobs. No, no, they're not. No wonder you feel tired. What's your total income from those (laughs) jobs? Uh, My total income is about 60,000 with those two. Hmm. So if you were to go back to school, what would you want to study? Well, um, I have a degree already in business administration, um, but I was thinking if I go more for a certification, not in a college, um, either something in accounting that would allow me to do that or um, something in web development, uh, maybe back-end web development. I mean, that's definitely a possibility. I mean, have you looked into jobs that you could get right now without an extra certification that are outside of teaching? Well, The teaching job is the one that I really want to hold on to. It doesn't pay much of anything, but it's kind of what makes me human. So I want to hold that. Hey, we need more people like you in the world. God bless the teachers. As a mother, I am very (laughs) concerned about the education system. So thank you for what you do. (laughs) Well, thank you. So this extra job, are you looking at another full-time job that's basically online? Yeah, maybe full-time. I think part-time I could probably do, but it would slow down any process of getting rid of debt for sure. Yeah. Have you looked at the price of the certification programs? 
Not really, no. I've looked just a little bit here and there, um, but it would take a lot of research to figure out, you know, get past just all the advertisements to get to what's real. Yeah, well, I know that there are some pretty affordable ones right now, and some are even free. I know that a lot of companies, like I I believe Google's got a really cool program right now where they'll train people for jobs that that they have in demand, and they'll train people for free. So, really? I mean, with a business administration degree, I mean, there's a lot of possibility right now to look into potentially a very low cost or free program that could yield a pretty cool job. Yeah. And I'm going to gift you, Julie, Ken Coleman's Get Clear Career Assessment to help you figure out exactly what the path is. Because you mentioned a few options there. And I want you to not just do the one that pays the most, but do the one that you're also passionate about. And I think you can make great money doing the thing that you love. And that's what our friend Ken teaches every day. So we're going to give you that. It'll take you about 20 minutes to go through, but that will help steer you towards the right direction. Uh, What kind of debt is this, the 60 k So it's a pretty even three-way split with student loan, a car, and then just credit card, you know, junk debt. Okay. Have you cut up the cards? No, but I don't use them. Then cut them up. That's a great way to never be able to use them. Uh, It can become a crutch when you fall on hard times and you go, well, at least the credit card companies are there for me, except they're not because they're there at 22% interest, keeping you in debt longer and longer. So cut those up. Uh, Would you consider selling the car? Is it worth more than you owe? Um, No, it's not. So I actually just bought out my sister's lease, uh, which was the cheapest way to get a car because our other car um, didn't have air conditioning. We'd fix it several times and then it goes back out. We were just kind of draining money. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm not sure that there's really a better option for me to go for right now. So what's left on the car loan? We just did that. So it's right at 20. Okay. When you say we, who is involved here? My husband. Okay. Is his income factored into this? No, it's not. So what is is his income not helping pay down this debt? Yes and no. We're we're not organized. We're all over the place. Um and so we we still feel like we're living paycheck to paycheck, pinching the pennies. Um yeah, that's, Just, that's the yeah. real crisis here, Julie. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to put you guys uh, through Financial Peace University on us if you're willing to do it. Is he on board or is he kind of skeptical towards this whole thing and going, well, that's your debt, not mine? What's well, his attitude? we share our finances. We share the finances, but I'm really the one who manages it. And so I think it's he doesn't feel all the stress that I do because it's easier for him not to look at it as intently so as I do. So you're carrying the brunt of all of the stress and burden and two full-time jobs, and he's like, well, she manages the money. I guess. Oh, Julie, guess Julie, Julie, Julie. All right, we're going to gift it to you. I hope that you guys go through it, have a serious conversation, and go, I'm not okay. I'm scared. I'm tired. I'm burnt out. I need you on board in this marriage. And if he's not willing to do that, we got bigger issues, and counseling needs to get involved here. Yeah. But I'm so sorry, Julie. That's tough. And y'all are just running so fast right now. Taking the time to you know slow down, get educated, get on a budget, that alone is probably going to save y'all so much. Yeah. So Hang on the line. We'll get you the Get Clear Assessment and Financial Peace University. We're cheering you on. This is The Ramsey Show. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalms 118.24 Give every day the chance to become the most beautiful day of your life. Mark Twain. Whew, that's beautiful. Beautiful reminders there. Yeah, sometimes you just need that little reminder. All right, let's go back to the phones. Uh, First, we have Lewis calling from Miami, Florida. Hey, Lewis, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. Hey, thanks for being here. How can we help? Well, I'm in a financial crisis, and and actually, um, I'm anxious and I'm scared. Uh, We sold our home uh, eight months ago, and we had proceeds of about $70,000. But because our debt-to-ratio is upside down, 
we've been finding ourselves dipping off of that money and paying bills, and we're down to 37000 to buy a home, and we're scared because we're still upside down in our debt. Well, tell us about this debt. How much debt do you have? Well, together with the two vehicles that I have, I have about $76,000 in debt. Just all vehicles? No, that's just uh, 33000 is credit cards and small loans, and the rest is for the two cars. But seventy six is the total? Correct. Okay. What is your uh, household income? Household income is about 115000 Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at the numbers here. It gives me a lot of hope. But I think part of it is, have you continued using the credit cards? Shame on me, but yes. Well, it's okay. But starting today, I think we need to cut them up because it's a crutch that's causing you to go further into debt. And on top of that, you're depleting the money. So you're using the credit cards, but you also said you're dipping into the proceeds from the home sale. That's correct. And is that going to just cover the bills, or do you, is there spending habit issues as well? Well, it's m- mostly covering the bills from spending on credit cards and, and small loans and things like that. Mm. Now, what are the cars worth? The cars are worth, actually, coincidentally, I, I went and appraised one of the cars today, and they're actually giving more than what I owe on the vehicle. This is a great situation. If I'm in your shoes and you're feeling that level of anxiety, like you can't crawl out of this thing, I would sell the cars and purchase something, a, a very reasonable, affordable used car with cash with the savings that you have. And with the proceeds okay. from the, you know, the profits from the car sales. Okay. Because that would leave you with how much debt? If you got rid of all the car loans, you just had the credit cards and personal loans, that leaves you with 33 k That's correct. And frees up the payments that you were making on those car loans. Now making 115000 with more margin, how quickly could you pay off 33000 Right. Makes sense. That gives me that. You feel that energy that we just created there, the momentum? Yes, you did. And so I think that is your next step. But beyond that, we have to change our behavior because selling the cars is a great shortcut. It's like a life hack, right? But we have not touched the behavior of what caused us to spend. And so part of that is the debt payments for sure. But part of it is we got to get on a budget. We are not eating out. We are scared through our – we have got to get out of debt if it's the last thing we do. And I think that's part of the reason you've called today. I can hear it in your voice. I mean it sounds like you've had that I've had it moment. It may have just recently happened but it seems like it's happened. Is that correct? Oh, no, that is definitely correct. Uh, uh, I've, I've not only had it, but I'm almost to the scared point because this is the money that we had to buy our home. We're renting now, waiting to find our home, but the money's depleting pretty quickly. Well, and that's when a lot of times real life change happens, when people hit that spot where they're like, we cannot live life like this anymore. It is time to change. That's when real change happens. So I know today is scary, and I know that you feel that palpitation in your in your chest, and it feels nerve wracking. But I, I know it's hard to hear this, but that's a good thing yeah. because today is the day that everything's going to change. Today is going to be the day that you look back on when you're on that debt free stage, and you say, "That's the day that everything changed. That's the day I made a decision. I stopped spending on credit cards. I changed my mindset. I got an FPU, and I was all in." And Lewis, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news here, but you're not ready to be a homeowner right now. And so I know you see this pile of cash and go, well, that's for the home. Right now it's to pay off the debt because that home's going to own you if you jump into it right now. And so here, if I'm in your shoes and you want to follow the baby steps, you want to be gazelle intense, here's what you're doing. You're selling both cars and hopefully the profits from that can get you used cars. If you need to dip into some of that savings to make it happen, that's okay. But the rest of that money, you might have 33000 left in savings or 34000 and you can clean up the rest of that debt this week. Right. Think about that. You're in a position where by the end of the week, you could be completely debt-free with no payments and about 1000 bucks in the bank. And yes, it feels like, well, we're moving backwards. No, my friend, you are moving forwards because you are not paying interest. You don't owe anyone anything. And now all of that 115000 can help you build back up your fully funded emergency fund, which means you're never going back into debt again. And then we can start saving back up for the house. So it may be three years before you're ready to jump into a house, which I know is frustrating, 
But man, you're going to be in a different place financially by the end of the week if you follow this stuff. Lewis, how does that wow, feel? That makes, that makes a lot of sense. Well, I want to equip you. I know we can't do it all on a radio call. I'm going to gift you one year of Financial Peace University. I want you to watch those videos with your family, all nine lessons, get fired up, use the every dollar budgeting tool to make a plan for every single dollar coming in. And man, please call us back when you're debt free. I love, we always love the where are they now stories, Christine. We never get to hear it. And I can feel the fire that Lewis has got. And we want to keep that going. So hang on the line. Austin's going to pick up. We'll gift you one year of Financial Peace and every dollar premium. Yes, I'm excited to hear that success story. Ooh. All right, we got time for one more call. We've got Hannah calling from Peoria, Illinois. Hey, Hannah, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for taking my call. Yeah, um, for- I just had a quick question about where to look for scholarships. Um, I have the opportunity to start a bachelor's program in January um, with my employer paying pretty much all of the tuition. Um, Amazing. However, it doesn't cover things like books or fees or anything like that. Okay, that's great. That's amazing that you got your employer to cover that. That's fantastic. And you can still make money while going to school. So that's fantastic. Yes. And I love a good scholarship conversation. Uh, one of my favorite databases to look at is Scholarship Owl. And they're great because basically a scholarship database goes through all the millions of scholarships out there. And it takes information about you and helps match you with scholarships that specifically fit you. So that's where I would start is looking at databases. I'd also look at the school that you're going to. So that's awesome that your okay. employer is you know, covering tuition. But see if the school has any scholarships. Have you checked that yet? Uh, not yet. I just got the um, the news that I was going to be that I got accepted as one of the fifty five that they're offering this to, um, and so I got that call earlier this week. Well, congratulations! That's amazing, and I love that your first go to is to immediately start thinking through how can I pay for the rest of this without debt. That your first thought is, you know, what scholarship can I find? How can I hustle? How can I figure this out? So that's outstanding. Yes. Do you know, is there any? This is actually my. Yeah, keep going. Uh, This is actually going to be my second bachelor's. And I did the first one with about 90,000 in uh, student loans that I'm still working on trying to pay off. Mm. So I do not definitely do not want to be going back into any more loans. <laughs> yes and amen. Well, you just said debt is off the table because I know what that's like. Never again. Yes. Oh, that is so cool to hear, Hannah. Well, we're cheering you on. And it's amazing what happens, Christina, when you just decide, you pre-decide mm-hmm. that debt is not an option. All of a sudden you get real creative and it causes you to be patient and do your research and be intentional and look for the scholarships and work. And all of these things combined cause you to to have that success, to cause you to go to college debt-free. Absolutely. Taking it off the table is just a game changer. And I will say with scholarships, be willing to be patient on the front end and do the research. I think people want to get on Google in about 30 minutes and find a list of 100 perfect scholarships that just apply to them. But it can take some time. Like you got to do the work on the front end so that you're really applying for the scholarships that fit you best. But I'm excited for you that it's amazing that you're going to go to nursing school debt-free. I love it. So that puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. If you like the show, please consider subscribing, leaving a review, and sharing it with a friend. Big thanks to all the guys in the booth for running the show and to my co-host, George Camel. And to you, America, thanks for listening. We'll be back soon. This is The Ramsey Show. Do you love a good Dave rant? Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from The Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to the Ramsey Show channel on YouTube.